The Culture Secretary, Jeremy Wright, has defended the decision to delay new rules on fixed odds betting terminals. The government announced back in May that the maximum stake on the machines would be cut to two pounds. Campaigners thought the changes would come into force in October 2019, but they're not now expected until April 2020. Well, our chief political correspondent, Vicky Young, joins me from Westminster. And there'll be uh, people who are not very happy about this, Vicky. Yeah, well, including the Culture Minister, Tracy Crouch. There was a huge battle about this change behind the scenes. Uh, I know from talking about her at the time, she feels extremely strongly about all of this, as do many others in the House of Commons, and we heard some of that uh, today. There are many who feel that the industry is preying on the vulnerable, uh, often uh, poorer people, that suicide rates amongst gambling addicts uh, is much higher than the rest of the population. Uh, so this was a change that many campaigners wanted, including uh, the minister. So reducing that from £100 to £2 was seen uh, as a very positive move. Now, the timetable over this, today the Culture Secretary, Jeremy Wright, suggested there had been no date in mind, but actually most people thought that the change might well come in in April next year. In the budget, uh, the government said actually it was going to be October. Now, their reasoning for that, they say, is that it's a big change, there could be job losses in the industry, and there's also the issue of money, of course. If you uh, reduce those uh, betting stakes, then uh, the tax take will be lower. The Treasury says it's got to make up that. So they're bringing in higher taxes on online casino uh, gambling games. And they want to make those changes at the same time. So that is their uh, rationale for doing this. But the Culture Minister, Tracy Crouch, is uh, extremely unhappy about it. Rumours that she's on the verge of resignation because of it, unless the government shifts its position. And today, Jeremy Wright was answering questions in the House and he was asked about uh, what Tracy Crouch was doing and whether she had in fact resigned. Let me start by saying that I think that my honourable friend for Chatham and Aylesford is doing an outstanding job as the Minister for Sports and Civil Society and the honourable gentleman is right that she deserves a large part of the credit for the substantive change that this government is making. A decision by the way that the last government, the last Labour government, did not make, and a decision which it falls to us now to make. As to why she isn't answering the urgent question, the urgent question that's been asked, Mr Speaker, is about a change in government policy. First of all, as I've explained to the Right Honourable Gentleman, there is no change in government policy. And I take responsibility for policy made in this department. The government collectively makes decisions on these matters, and that is the decision that I have explained to the House. Now, Tracy Croach is not alone in being the uh, only person who thinks that any kind of uh, delay would be wrong. There are other Conservatives who spoke out today and others that I've spoken to who really feel very strongly about this issue. So uh, the government's got itself into this situation where it's possible that they might lose one of their ministers over this and then lose a vote in the House of Commons uh, if they can't get other Conservatives to agree to it. Vicky, thanks very much indeed. Yorkshire. After half past two, we'll be joined by a mother who's been campaigning for a change in the law on medicinal cannabis. The Culture Secretary, Jeremy Wright, has defended the timescale for the implementation of new rules on fixed odds betting terminals. The government announced in May that the maximum stake on the machines would be cut to £2. The changes will not be brought in until next October. Campaigners had hoped it would be brought in by next spring. Well, our chief political correspondent, Vicky Young, joins us now from Westminster. Vicky. Yeah, and it was quite a battle persuading the Treasury to change the rules on all of this because, of course, it brings in a lot of money. The tax that's paid on those uh, bets is pretty lucrative. So the argument today from the government was that it's not the principle that's an argument here. Uh, it is about the timing, and they say there's a knock-on effect for the industry. It has to have time to adapt to all of this. There could be job losses as well in the industry so that's why they want it to be October now Tracy Crouch the culture minister uh, battled really hard to get this change she really spearheaded a campaign uh, which was you know 
lots of campaigners were behind it, lots of MPs as well, who a lot of them feel it's morally wrong that uh, this was preying on some of the poorest and most vulnerable in society and was actually uh, leading to some devastating consequences and gambling addiction. As you say, though, the Culture Secretary today uh, said that the timing, there had been no change at all. He said that this was the right timing and the right timescale. Let me start by saying that I think that my honourable friend for Chatham and Aylesford is doing an outstanding job as the Minister for Sports and Civil Society. And the honourable gentleman is right that she deserves a large part of the credit for the substantive change that this government is making. A decision, by the way, that the last government, the last Labour government, did not make, and a decision which it falls to us now to make. As to why she isn't answering the urgent question, the urgent question that's been asked, Mr Speaker, is about a change in government policy. First of all, as I've explained to the Right Honourable Gentleman, there is no change in government policy, and I take responsibility for policy made in this department. The government collectively makes decisions on these matters, and that is the decision that I have explained to the House. Now, Tracy Crouch is said to be absolutely furious about this. She, along with many others, clearly felt that she did have a commitment uh, from the government that this change would happen sooner uh, in April. What's interesting is I've been speaking to other Conservative MPs uh, and they've made it clear that they too are unhappy about this. Now there is the possibility that there could be a vote on all of this, uh, possibly brought forward by Labour, but uh, to do with the budget. So that could be a massive problem for the government, of course, with uh, not really a very big workable majority. They could struggle uh, to win a vote on all of that. Tracy Crouch, meanwhile, is spending the day considering whether to resign over the matter. Vicky, thank you very much. Vicky Young in Westminster. Let's take you back to that uh, news about gambling. And uh, we were saying that the sports minister, Tracy Crouch, um, was considering resigning uh, from the government over delays in cutting the maximum stake on fixed odds betting terminals. Um, we understand now that she actually has resigned in the last few minutes, so uh, let's bring you the latest on that. This is over uh, perceived delays of uh, bringing in that uh, cut to the maximum stake on fixed odds betting terminals. Let's go back to Vicky Young, our chief political correspondent. Vicky, what is the latest? Yeah, I understand that Tracy Crouch has decided to resign over all of this. In some ways, many will feel it's not a surprise, given that she has always felt so passionately about this issue. It was quite a tussle between her department and the Treasury over getting this change uh, originally. Now, this isn't over the principle. That is going ahead. It's about the timing. Tracy Crouch and other MPs on all sides of the House thought they had an understanding that this would be brought in in April. In the budget, the government concluded that actually that was going to come in in October. So they've seen that as a rowing back uh, on a promise. Uh, and I think it's, you know, it's bad news, of course, for the government. They have lost a minister who is uh, seen as very capable, very popular uh, over an issue which many feel that the government will be defeated on if it comes to a vote in the finance bill later this month. Labour has already said that they would be willing to put down an amendment to force the government uh, to bring this change forward to April. Uh, so it seems that they may well have lost a minister and they may well also lose a vote. And I know you want to speak to Ian Duncan Smith later on. He is one of those conservative backbenchers uh, who agrees that uh, this kind of uh, betting is really preying on some of the poorest and most vulnerable in society and that uh, a delay to bringing in these changes is simply not right and the government should act sooner. Now this morning the government were defending all of this uh, by saying that actually there's a big, it's a big change for the industry, there could be job losses as well. Uh, and so they wanted to give the industry time to adapt to all of that and also to replace the lost revenue. Uh, they also uh, feel very strongly that they need to replace that revenue to fund things like public services. So they're bringing in higher taxes on online gambling and they want to bring in those two changes together. Now we were expecting a possible U-turn from the government this afternoon. There were some words from Liz Truss, uh, the Treasury Minister, a few about half an hour ago, but they didn't really seem to go far enough. And you could. Even here, some Tory MPs uh, just muttering that that wasn't enough. And there are, it was interesting today, MPs on all sides of the House of Commons 
who uh, were very much hoping that Tracy Crouch would stay uh, in her job because she is highly regarded uh, by people on all sides of the house for the work she's done, particularly on this issue. Uh, yeah, and Vicky, it's very clear this is a, a real matter of principle for a lot of MPs, including uh, Tracy Crouch. And, and, and this is an issue that provokes real anger, doesn't it, in the Commons? Um, because these fixed odds betting terminals, they're, they're seen as a kind of crack cocaine of, of gambling addiction. Yeah, that's right. And people and MPs have talked for a long time and the campaign uh, that went on for a long time to get these changes uh, talked about you know, how it blighted people's lives, it destroyed people's lives. The fact that suicide rates uh, are higher uh, amongst those who are uh, addicted to gambling and that these kind of betting terminals uh, just really contributed to that gambling problem. So it was a, a campaign that was you know, won over years to get those changes brought in, but I think this is seen as a betrayal uh, by many MPs uh, by the government because the understanding, although it wasn't written down, the understanding from several MPs I've spoken to today that they said it was very clear, those who've been campaigning for it for years, that it was very clear that the understanding was it would be brought in in April, uh, something that the government has denied. And as I say, they this morning were defending uh, their position, but I think there will be some. You know, in the Conservative Party, they'll be very upset about this uh, and they will think that it was a self-inflicted wound, that there was no need for this to happen. The principle uh, is agreed upon. Everybody uh, there thinks that it's the right thing to do. And actually, for a matter of a few months, uh, it would have been worth making that change, as those campaigners would see it, uh, because it would you know, help people's lives. Yeah, and, and, and from the government's point of view, really, Vicky, this is, th these are going to be bad headlines tonight and tomorrow. And, and some people would say, well, they could have avoided it by just, you know, uh, climbing down a little bit and just changing the time span of this by a few months. Yeah, absolutely. And I think with all the other issues they have going on, I think what it does show us is how incredibly difficult it is to govern when you don't have a uh, sizable majority. It does mean that if MPs on your own side don't like something, they have the capability uh, to defeat the government. And I think that's what's sort of slightly perplexing about this, is that there is very likely to be a vote in the House of Commons on this issue. Uh, and from MPs I've spoken to today on the Conservative side, a number of them have said to me that they would not back the government on this. So it doesn't take very many Tory MPs to defeat the government. So they could end up losing a minister on all of this and then losing a vote and having to think again uh, anyway. So uh, we'll see what happens if that vote happens in a couple of weeks' time. It would be an amendment to the finance bill, which actually hasn't been published yet, but there are Labour MPs who are hoping to put down an amendment and they're very confident that they will get Conservatives to back them on all of this. OK, Vicky, thank you very much indeed. Vicky Young bringing us the latest from Westminster, which is that news in the last few minutes that the sports minister, Tracy Crouch, has resigned from the government over delays, um, as she believes they are, in cutting the maximum stake at fixed odds betting terminals. More on that throughout the programme. In the meantime, let's check out the latest weather forecast. Let's get more now on our breaking news this evening and in the last few minutes we have reported that the sports minister Tracy Crouch has resigned from the government over perceived delays in cutting the maximum stake on fixed odds betting terminals. Well, the Chancellor announced in the budget that the change would take place in October 2019. Now, campaigners had been hoping the changes would come in six months earlier, next spring. Well, the government is still insisting there hasn't been any delay at all. Well, our political correspondent, Leila Nathu, has this report. A popular and respected minister, Tracy Crouch today chose to put principle before her career. During her time at the Culture and Sport Department, she sought to tackle problem gambling, announcing in May that the maximum stakes on fixed odds betting terminals, considered to be highly addictive, were to be cut from £100 to just two. This was widely welcomed by campaigners, but Monday's budget revealed the change wouldn't be brought in until October next year. Like many others in Westminster, Tracy Crouch had wanted it sooner, and today she stood down over the decision. In the Commons this morning, Labour's Tom Watson accused the government of capitulating to the gambling industry. It's a betrayal of the government's own three-year review that was meticulously conducted by the member for Chatham and Aylesford. And when the government itself has admitted the social blight of FOBTIS, it seems to me incomprehensible and inconceivable that the government would delay a policy supported by many people 
on both sides of this House and in both chambers. The government insisted there was never any commitment to a date to bring in the change and that preparations were needed. It was also right to consider planning to reduce the effect of job losses for those working in betting shops on the high street and allowing time for that planning to take effect. It also has to be recognised that right though this change is, money for public services coming from the use of FOBTs has to be replaced or public services will have less funding. But Tracy Crouch remained unconvinced, handing in her letter of resignation to Downing Street this afternoon. Leila Nathu, BBC News, Westminster. Well, we're going to talk about the issues all of this raises with uh, Matt Zard cousin. He, he became addicted to fixed odds betting terminals at the age of 16 and now campaigns for legislative change around gambling. Uh, Matt, thanks for being with us. And we're going to talk about Tracy Crouch, who I know that you, you know and you've campaigned with um, in a minute and, and the politics of all of this. But first of all, tell us about your experience. So you were just 16 when you effectively got addicted. Yes, that's right. I went into a betting shop for the first time when I was 16 and to put a bet on a football match and uh, put some money in the machine and very quickly had a couple of wins and uh, became addicted over a number of weeks, I think. After a few weeks, I felt like I'd, if I wasn't gambling, I needed to plan my next trip to the betting shop. Um, I was thinking about gambling all the time. Uh, and then it led to a point where I was uh, in tens of thousands of pounds worth of debt uh, by the age of 20 maxed out numerous overdrafts and loans and sold all my possessions just to fund this addiction. And so you were losing money but you, could, you were still addicted to it? Yes, uh, definitely, but I think the, the, the difference with gambling addiction as to other addictions is the, the idea that you can maybe win the money back feeds the delusion and uh, that's what kind of incentivizes the continuation of gambling. So. Uh, it's very, very dangerous in that sense. In, in, with other addictions, alcohol and drugs, um, you know, obviously there is a propensity to overdose, but with gambling there's no limit to uh, what you can lose. Um, and I think it's one of those addictions where you think if I have a big win, then it will solve all my problems, and that's what keeps you going. And it, obviously it's completely irrational. The fixed odd terminals, just explain how they work to, to people who don't know them, because they've been described as the, the kind of crack cocaine of gambling. That's the equivalent of how addictive they are. Yeah, anyone who's been in a betting shop uh, and either used these machines or seen people playing these machines knows that there's a problem with them. And Tracy Crouch is one of those people who has actually been in betting shops, you know, put, bet on, put a bet on racing or sports or whatever. She's not anti-gambling. She just knows that these machines are a particular problem. And when she became the gambling minister in October 2016, I think it was, sorry, 2015 it was, in October 2015 she asked for a gambling review. David Cameron and George Osborne said no. And then she asked again a year later when Theresa May was prime minister, she said yes. We're now two years on from that gambling review. It took 19 months for the government to come to a decision. Uh, and they announced in May it would be a two pound cap and we're now in October, and now the government's saying that it's going to be another year. I think the, the, book, the bookmakers have had far too long, had long enough. Uh, the industry was saying at the all-party group inquiry recently that it would take nine to 12 months, and I think that's a real overestimate to run a software update on the machines. But let's just take them at their word. Nine to 12 months from May 2018 is April or May 2019, and there's no excuse for a delay beyond that. So, I mean, you obviously think Tracy Crouch was right to resign. Are, are you surprised in a way, or she's clearly so passionate about this that uh, I guess it isn't a surprise that she has resigned? It's not a surprise. What's a surprise is the government haven't uh, decided to row back on this and actually agree to April 2019. I think for, for the sake of six months? I think it's completely brainless from the government, to be honest, because they're just going to lose a vote on the budget. That there will be an amendment to the finance bill now, and there's a majority in the House, and I think what will happen is it, Tracy Crouch will vote for that amendment for it to be to April 2019. And that's why she's resigned. And you think other MPs would, ba would back her on that? There are plenty of other MPs. There are dozens of MPs, Tory MPs. It's a Labour Party policy. I just think the government has handled this terribly. But in a sense, I suppose, from your point of view, what is good is that the whole issue of gambling addiction is rising up the agenda. It's being debated. It's being talked about. It's in the political sphere now. 
Yeah, I think that's a very good thing. I think there are many issues with the current gambling legislation, and that is Labour's fault. The last Labour government were responsible for that. Uh, I think there needs to be a levy for treatment. I think treatment's underfunded. Online gambling is obviously another issue. Advertising, um, but I think that there is a growing. Uh, TV advertising of gambling is, is, yeah. is still very controversial. Very much so because. You know, there's a pre-watershed exemption for live sporting events and I think that there is a consensus growing, uh, cross-party consensus, that we need to... R huge reforms of the gambling, of how we regulate gambling, and, I, and I'm very pleased with that, obviously. OK, just very briefly, you got out of it, but lots of other people obviously haven't and can't. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm obviously very uh, happy to have got out of it. Um, I had a support of family and... Uh, you know, I was able to get treatment and whatever, so, uh, but the important thing is I think we have to try and do everything we can within the regulatory framework to reduce gambling related harm and the two pound stake on fixed odds betting terminals will go a huge way to doing that. Very good to talk to you, thanks for being with us. Matt Bazaar, cousin, a, a former gambling addict, thank you for your time. Let's just uh, remind you of our breaking news this hour that Tracy Crouch, a sports minister, has resigned from the government over perceived delays in implementing a maximum stake on fixed odds betting terminals. Um, and this is a tweet we've just had in from Tracy Crouch. It's, with great sadness, I've resigned from one of the best jobs in government, she says. Uh, thank you so much for all the very kind messages of support I've received throughout the day. Politicians come and go but principles stay with us forever. And uh, we were talking in the last few minutes to one um, campaigner against uh, these gambling machines, a former gambling addict who was saying that Tracy Crouch has been a great uh, campaigner on this issue and, and saying that she is a woman of principle and uh, saying he wasn't actually surprised that she had resigned because of this uh, perceived delay of six months in implementing that maximum stake. So much more on that throughout the evening, but Tracy Crouch there saying it is with great sadness that she resigns from the government. OK, let's uh, get a look at the weather forecast for you now. And Alina... The Sports Minister, Tracy Crouch, has resigned amid claims that the government has delayed cutting the maximum stake on fixed odds betting terminals from £100 to £2 until October 2019 instead of next April. The government is changing the rules next year to try to tackle problem gambling, but there have been claims that such a big reduction in the amount people can stake could cost thousands of jobs. Our political correspondent, Vicky Young, is in Westminster. And Vicky, this is an announcement that was made in the budget on Monday. Yeah, that's right. This isn't about the principle of that reduction. That has been decided. But there were clearly MPs, including Tracy Crouch, on all sides of the House who thought their understanding was that this change would be brought in in April. Now, in the budget, it was announced that actually it would be in October. Now, earlier, uh, the Culture Minister, Jeremy Wright, defended it, saying that this is a huge change for the gambling industry. There will be uh, potential job losses. They have to have time to uh, adapt. But we have now seen the letter from Tracy Crouch, her resignation letter to the Prime Minister, and it's clear how passionate uh, she feels about this issue. She campaigned for it for a long time, and she says it's all about supporting vulnerable people against the power of big business. And she talks about uh, the impact that this kind of gambling has on people's families, uh, the fact that it preys on many of the most vulnerable people in society and can uh, lead to suicides. Now, this will be, I think, destabilizing uh, for the government with everything else that is going on. Uh, so that is definitely uh, a problem for them. Uh, and they could end up, well, losing a minister, but also losing a vote on this because Tracy Crouch is not the only Conservative MP who would be prepared to vote against the government on this issue. Vicky Young in Westminster, thank you. Well, more now on the news that the sports minister, Tracy Crouch, has resigned in protest at the government's decision to delay introducing restrictions on high-stakes betting machines. Ministers have agreed to cut the maximum bet on fixed odds terminals from £100 to £2 as part of a crackdown on problem gambling. But the change will take effect in a year's time rather than in six months, as was previously indicated. Well, Ian Duncan-Smith, who's vice chair of the all-party parliamentary group on fixed odds betting terminals, said that wasn't soon enough. The truth is the £2 stake is the right thing to do, but we need to do it quickly. Because otherwise, what happens, more lives are damaged, more lives are blighted. In the meanwhile, the gambling industry continues to make money. Let's do it. Let's do it quickly. And the government can do that. And I hope they'll return to this. 
I'm sorry Tracy Crouch has had to resign, and I'm sorry this kind of mars the end of the budget because, you know, on both sides, I wish that hadn't happened. But now it has happened. Maybe the message goes home. People are very serious about this, and we want this done. So I say to my government, let's get on and do it and avoid any further arguments. Uh, Labour's deputy leader Tom Watson joined Ian Duncan Smith in praising Tracy Crouch's decision to resign over the issue. Well, we've seen Tracy Crouch battle within her own ranks for some months, indeed some would say years, to win through on this policy commitment. Uh, and so we weren't surprised when she resigned. You know, and this is one of those occasions where, even as the opposition, we will say this was an honourable resignation. We had a minister that resigned on a point of principle that she felt very strongly about, and we're actually very sad that she's leaving because she would have implemented this policy had she stayed in government. But I think she just felt this was a delay too far, and she had to send a signal to the Prime Minister and, crucially, the new Secretary of State, who has less commitment to this policy than she did, that enough is enough. And so we're sad to see her go. Uh, but we will continue to work on a cross-party basis with those MPs who've expressed their concerns that these machines are blighting the lives of millions of gambling addicts. Welcome to South East Today, I'm Charlie Rose. And I'm Natalie Graham. Tonight's top stories. The Sports Minister and Kent MP Tracy Crouch resigns from government, angered by delays to gambling reforms. We're live with reaction from Westminster. The Sussex man who deliberately infected his sexual partners with HIV loses an appeal against his conviction and prison sentence. Also in tonight's programme, he stabbed his mother to death in Sussex. Thomas Fisher is jailed for life with time in a secure hospital. Mr Fisher had long had paranoid thoughts and psychotic thoughts, um, which is really a testament to how sad this case was. Celebrating success at the Invictus Games, we speak to RAF veteran Darren Young, who's won two medals in Sydney. And best in his club, the Kent golf champion who's already winning international tournaments at the age of just six. Good evening. In the past hour, the Chatham and Ellsford MP Tracy Crouch has resigned as sports minister, angered by the delays in cutting the maximum stake on fixed odds betting terminals. The Medway towns have one of the country's highest concentrations of the machines, which can see gamblers lose thousands of pounds within minutes. They've been dubbed the crack cocaine of gambling. Tracy Crouch's resignation letter says £1.6 billion will be lost by gamblers before the new law is brought in, and much of that in the country's most deprived areas. She says two people take their own lives every day because of gambling-related problems, and the delay in reducing the maximum stake to £2 is unjustifiable. Lucinda Adam has the details. <laughs> A week's wages lost in just a few minutes. Tracy Crouch fought hard to curb high stakes gaming machines. In May, she won her battle. I myself, as a member of parliament, have seen some of the uh, awful uh, situations that people have got themselves into because of these high stake machines. Uh, and while it's taken a long time to get to this position, I'm really pleased that as minister and as part of this government, we've been able to take action. Now she's gambled her political career furious at the government delaying plans to take action. Currently, gamblers can spend £100 every 20 seconds on electronic casino games such as roulette. It's generating £1.8 billion in revenue a year for the betting industry. But under new laws, the maximum stake on fixed odd betting terminals will be reduced to just £2. It's been a dramatic day in Parliament. Tracy Crouch flew home from the USA this morning. Fresh from ministerial meetings at the White House, she met Conservative Party whips. While in the House of Commons, colleagues from all parties voiced their support. The member for Chatham and Aylesford did the right thing in announcing this policy. This House supported her, as did those working to eradicate gambling addiction. 
To say that I am incandescent, along with other members across this House, including, I would argue, the Minister for Sport, who, if she does resign, will be a great loss to the front bench because her integrity and bravery surpasses anyone else I see in here today. But, as gamblers learn, the House always wins and the government wouldn't fold. There are a number of factors that governments always have to balance in making these decisions. That isn't always easy, and it certainly isn't always popular, but it is important that we make this decision stick. The Archbishop of Canterbury in Chatham on Monday discussed gambling and expressed his disappointment. I am appalled that the implementation of something that's been voted by Parliament very clearly should have been delayed. The debt that these gaming machines causes is so severe that more than £30 million is lost each year by players in Kent and Medway alone. I understand and respect why she has resigned today as a minister as a point of principle. Like uh, myself and many others, uh, she's uh, tirelessly looked at this issue. With more work still to do, Tracy Crouch will continue her fight from the back benches. Lucinda Adam, BBC South East Today, Chatham. Well, let's talk now to our political editor, Helen Catt, who's in Westminster. Helen, what's Tracy Crouch had to say in her resignation letter to the Prime Minister? Well, she says that she is tendering her resignation with sadness, that she says the Prime Minister, she thanked her for her personal support on cutting the stakes, which she said was very welcome. But this isn't a letter that pulls its punches. She talks about an unjustifiable delay, says it's caused by commitments made by others to those with registered interests. She also refers to the remarks made by her former boss, Jeremy Wright, the Culture Secretary, that ministers are not allowed to dis disagree with government policy, let alone, she says, policy made against your wishes relating to your own portfolio. Now, Tracy Crouch has received a lot of support from others here in Westminster this evening, many seeing it as taking a principled stand, but she does acknowledge that this will be an unwelcome distraction for the government, not, uh, not least, I would think, a personal loss to her. This was often seen as Tracy Crouch's dream job. Okay, Helen, thank you.